Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here, and as you know, WWDC just passed, and Apple gave us a bunch of new betas to play around with, like iOS 13, iPadOS 13, WatchOS 6, and of course, the new Mac beta for macOS Catalina. But today, I just wanted to focus on my top 10 features for macOS Catalina. Now, my first top features for macOS Catalina kind of come from the death of a really big feature that's been around for 18 years of Mac history. Of course, I'm talking about the death, or rather the breakup, of iTunes. Now, instead of playing all of our songs and music through iTunes, we now do it through the standalone music app. Now this standalone music app has a much more focused design than the old iTunes where it included things like TV shows, podcasts, and a bunch of other different features like syncing your devices. Now we have a standalone music app which should hopefully cut down a lot on the extra bloatware and cause this to be a much faster and a much more responsive application. And if you were fearing that the death of iTunes would be saying goodbye to your local music library, well fear not because the music app brings in all of your local music as well as combined combining your Apple Music subscription. And we get some refreshed UI that's very similar to the music app that's on our iPads and iPhones. But even with some of those design refreshes, the main library looks a lot like the old way you would browse music on iTunes, and they do a good job of bringing in the new UI elements when it makes sense, and the old Mac elements when those also make sense. The second thing to come out of the breakup of the iTunes feature is now a standalone TV app. So now you have one place to find all of your movies and TV shows. And the UI on the Mac looks very similar to what you might find on the iPad TV app. Of course, with your own library of movies and TV shows, and of course that new TV section where it's trying to recommend you content that you might be interested in based on your browsing history. I think my favorite feature of the new TV app is that this is the first time that iTunes movies will be available in 4K HDR natively on a Mac. Before, if you played those movies through iTunes, they were limited to 1080p HD, and now we finally, finally can watch 4K movies on our Retina 5K iMac. This was seriously a long overdue feature, and now that the breakup of iTunes is here and we have our standalone TV app, finally, 5K iMac users can watch that content in 4K like they should be able to. Okay, so the TV app and music app were written using Apple's older design language for AppKit. Now this new application is actually using Catalyst or previously called Project Marzipan to bring over an iOS app directly to run on the Mac and this is the new podcast app. So much like music and TV, podcast now gets its own focused app where you can find all of your podcasts, download it right onto your Mac. So I think the most standout feature about the podcast app on macOS Catalina is that it looks very similar to the music app despite using two different design frameworks to create both applications, and I think this is a really good example of how you can take that iOS code base and make it look and act just like a Mac application. Of course, you get all of the relevant sections you would expect, like listen now, browse, and top charts. You can see what's recently added to your library, all of your different shows or episodes, and of course, all of the podcasts you have downloaded locally to your Mac. Now, honestly, there really isn't much to talk about a podcast app. It's an app that plays podcasts, but like I said before, this is just a great app to really show that third-party developers can make these iOS apps that are on the iPad look and act just like a Mac app. I was most impressed with the design cues I saw with the podcast app because I thought it looked very, very similar to Apple's music app. Speaking of Catalyst apps, my next top feature actually isn't available in this macOS beta yet, and that's partly because third-party developers just haven't had access to macOS Catalina for that long, and I don't think these apps would even be ready until macOS Catalina launches in the fall. But this is a really important part of the operating system, and that, of course, is the availability of these Catalyst apps being open to third-party developers. Apple already has a bunch of applications already working on macOS Catalina using the Catalyst technology, including the podcast app, the news app, the home app, voice memos, stocks, and some other applications are already using 
Catalyst to bring that iOS code base over to the Mac. I personally think that Project Catalyst is going to be a really big deal because it's going to enable a bunch of third-party iOS developers to easily bring over their applications to the Mac. And this technology is really going to make the Apple ecosystem that much stronger when you have one unified code base and that's able to run on an iPhone, an iPad, or a Mac. Moving on, there are even more apps taking advantage of Project Catalyst on Mac OS Catalina and that is the new Reminders app. I previously mentioned how much I like the Reminders redesign in my top 13 iPad OS features, and that is no different on the Mac. Reminders is getting a very similar update with easy access for your reminders for today or scheduled tasks for later. You're also getting that same natural language that was shown off in the iPad, where if you're typing out a reminder, you can now just write that in natural language, and when it presents itself, you could just easily select that date and then your reminder will remind you on that date. Another great feature in macOS Catalina comes way of the Find My app. They kind of call it Find My instead of Find My iPhone, but this is a unified app where you can now put all of your devices and also if you have Find My Friends enabled, this is now where all of those Find My features live. Now the feature I like doesn't necessarily have to do with the Find My application itself. It more has to do with what happens if you leave your MacBook behind or if someone steals your Mac. Well, with the new Find My features, your Mac will automatically transmit out a encrypted signal that only your devices can actually see where that location is. And even if your Mac is closed up and disconnected from the internet, if a stranger walks by that stolen Mac or that misplaced Mac, with an iPhone or another Apple device, it will automatically ping that MacBook and then send that signal and location all the way back to you. Now, what's great about this feature is that it works in sleep mode because if someone steals your Mac, obviously it's gonna be closed up, but also the fact that this is very private and secure and that only your encrypted Apple devices can receive this location information. And I think this is a really, really nice feature, not only if someone breaks in and steals your MacBook, but also if you leave a product behind at something like a train station. Now with all of those iOS users out in the wild, there's someone bound to walk by your misplaced laptop and then you can easily find it. Now this next feature, Apple introduced it last year with iOS 12 and this year they're bringing it to the Mac and that is the screen time feature. And screen time works very similar to how it would on iOS. So when you open the screen time application, you can see how often you are using your Mac. You can even see how many times you picked up your MacBook for the day, how long you've been using the system, or how long you've been using specific applications. Of course, one of the bigger benefits of screen time is the ability to set limits on the types of applications you're using. So say if you want it to limit your video game time, you want it to be a little bit more productive, you can set a hard limit of an hour or two hours or 12 hours if you want to just play video games all day on the screen time feature, and then you can keep yourself accountable. You can set these limits for categories of apps, or you can set them to specific applications. I think the best part about having screen time in the Mac is just now that we have a complete picture of how we're spending our digital lifestyle between our iPhone, our iPad, and our Mac, and now we can sync up all of the screen time between all of those devices and really see how long we're spending in front of a computer screen all day. So this year, iOS 13 and iPadOS 13 get the inclusion of a dark mode. Now, that feature launched last year with macOS Mojave. However, they made some really nice updates to dark mode in macOS Catalina. And that just comes with one simple change, and that is the ability to automatically adjust between light mode and dark mode depending on the time of day. Speaking of small features that are really helpful, I also like the new way that you can tile apps in macOS Catalina. Now, this feature has been available on macOS for quite some time. However, in macOS Catalina, they surface it to you very differently. On macOS Catalina, all you have to do is hover the mouse pointer directly over that green button, and then you will get the option to either snap your window to the left or right side. Okay, enough with the small features, let's tackle a bigger feature in macOS Catalina. And this is a feature that works in tandem with your iPad, so it's also an iPad OS feature as well as a macOS Catalina feature. And that is of course, Sidecar. So Sidecar gives you the ability to use your iPad as an external display for your Mac. The second and cooler feature in my opinion is you can actually control these windows directly on your iPad. Now, unlike some third party options like Duet Display or Luna Display, 
touch operation doesn't work with your fingers. However, if you have the Apple Pencil accessory for your iPad, you can directly control the inputs available to you. And this actually works the best because on Mac OS, you need a more precise pointing tool and the Apple Pencil does a good job of this. So now you can run pro applications that are only available on Mac like Final Cut Pro 10 or also use your iPad as a drawing tablet for graphic designers and graphic artists who already have an iPad and a Mac, and now they don't have to buy a third-party Wacom tablet or stylus. All right, everyone, and those were my top 10 features in Mac OS Catalina. Let me know in the comments below what were some of your favorite features, and if I didn't get to any of the features that you liked, be sure to let me know in the comments below. As always, if you liked the video, make sure you give me a like if you wanna see more from my channel, including more coverage of Mac OS Catalina. Make sure you're subscribed, and as always, I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.